setting up the last couple things, but I didn't want to be late. So let's see. December Q and A session about to happen here. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the comments um, and I will answer them. And I have a couple for ahead of time. Um, I just wanted to be able to show this for a second um, so that people know where they are and what we're doing. So every second Thursday of the month at about five o'clock uh, mountain time, I hang out here on Facebook Live for about half an hour to answer questions. Um, although because it's the holiday, if I don't get a lot of questions, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter than usual. But um, that's because I have to go bake some cookies. All right, I've got some lighting issues again. I'll get this solved eventually, everybody. And guess what? I have a cat waiting to get let in. So hang on a sec. All right, maybe I'll show up <laughs> a little later. Um, so let's see. Let me get the questions up here. Um, all right, so I'm just going to read this because it's a little bit um, involved. So how do I stop wanting what I don't need? I'm frustrated because I have OCD and I'm having a hard time letting go of what's perfect. All right, that question is from Jen. Um, and she sent this, I think she sent it a while back, but um, I addressed it, I addressed an answer to her earlier, but wanted to share it because it's such a great question about how do you stop wanting? Well, it's really hard to stop wanting, especially if you don't know what you really want. So taking the time to set out your goals, what's your desired outcome? Um, how do you want to live your life? What would life be like if you could have it exactly as you want it? Um, and instead of being uh, depleted a lot of the time or tired or not quite sure, um, what you're trying to achieve. So you're trying a bunch of stuff and just picking stuff up and buying it and it doesn't all fit together exactly. Uh, that's where we end up with too much stuff. Um, it's fine to want things. It's fine to desire things. The trick is being really clear on why you desire them and what you're trying to accomplish by getting those things. So even a minimalist can want things. They just want the best version of the thing that's going to solve a problem that they actually have. And so think about that. What's the problem you're trying to solve by accumulating the new thing? Is it you want to be able to measure things to bake some cookies, so you buy some measuring cups? Um, or is it that you want to be beautiful, and so you buy a thousand different clothing items and none of them really fit you and you still don't feel beautiful? See what I mean? There's differences in how you can desire things and what... Um, picking things up to fill that hole or solve that problem, which may or may not exist in the first place. Okay. Um, so yeah, you just have to be really clear because wanting is what happens when you're not clear on what you want to do or what you want in your life. So get really clear. Um, it's much easier to leave. <laughs> what I wrote to Jen uh, when I answered a question via email was once you know that you're not going to do archery, it's easier to avoid the bow and arrow aisle. Um, and that's true. Uh, and I think I wrote that the day after a friend of mine turns out uh, actually was practicing archery while we were at this event and I had no idea. Um, and it sounded fun and I kind of wanted to have done it, but anything. Anyway, the, Try to do some inventory of the things that you actually enjoy doing and actually want to do, and then see if you already have the things to do those things. Use those up before buying more or new. And if you take inventory first, you can spend some of that time that you'd be out spending money or picking up things you don't really need. You can be getting clear on if it's something you still want to do, an activity you still want to participate in something you want to do more with or of. Um, and then you can really be clear on what you want to fill in holes wise. Like, are you missing um, the paintbrush you need to, to do that one kind of painting? Or are you um, missing the right kind of pen to do your Zentangle? Or are you 
um, missing those measuring cups to bake the cookies. So you will get really clear on what you need um, and what you already have as you gather it together. And that'll reduce the clutter in the rest of your house too, because you'll start gathering like things together that you need to accomplish certain things. And then they're all in a little pile in a little group. So you can get all that stuff done. Um, let's see. Yeah, just focus on making the things you already have handy, and then it's less likely that you'll feel the need to go get the thing you think you need because you already know if you have it or not. Um, so one of the other tips I suggested uh, to Jen was to consider lining stuff up and then using it up in order before buying more. So if you are, let's say, cleaning out your bathroom and you have a whole bunch of half open bottles of lotion and they're all half full, um, line them up and just start using them one at a time or consolidate. If it's the same brand, consolidate and use it up and get rid of as many extra bottles of things. Or, um, you know, if you have a bunch of pens, I keep um, kind of one set of pens in my pen cup. Um, and so I have, you know, one silver Sharpie three sizes of black Sharpie, uh, a red uh, marker and a red Sharpie, four highlighters, and um, a letter opener, scissors, magnifying glass, and my pen and eraser and pencil are all right here on my desk because I actually picked them up off the desk, not out of the cup. But this is where all the other implements are. The back stock of those though are in the drawer. So I can, when one of these dies, I take it, put it in the trash, and then I grab one out of the drawer to replace it. So I have a set of the things I need and use and a plan for rotating them. So I'm using things up before I buy. Then when I put, when I take the last one from the drawer to put in the cup, that's when it goes on the list to buy the new. So it's that rotation system. And lining it up allows you to see, oh, well, I have 15 different yellow highlighters, but I only really like using the one brand. And that way you can then, you know, give the others away or um, use them up and then just stick with the brand you really love. Um, either way, it works, but it helps you stop wanting by knowing what you already own and feeling really great about the fact that you already own things um, and you don't have to buy it. It's just a subtle mind shift that you already own it. So why I don't need to go to the store to get it. Aren't I lucky? Aren't I prepared? I already have it. Um, so those things can can be helpful as well. Um, and it helps you over buying and it helps you focus those OCD tendencies on something other than accumulating more. It's lining them up or making the arrangement of them just right, the ones you already have. So you can, you know, let your OCD loose on that a little bit. Just don't over organize. And by that, I mean, don't put the thing in a box, in a bin, in a basket, on a shelf, behind a closed door, because then you'll never use it. So you want to have that balance of handy versus um, tucked away together. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's a great question. Uh, and I find it's one that many of my clients struggle with that I want more. So I'm buying more and that's not solving my clutter problem. It's because it's you're just thinking about it backwards. Enjoy the stuff you have first and then add to it. Um, it's a great way to, to achieve that um, balance of wanting to futz around with things and see things in a new way, which you can do at a store or you can do by opening your closet and rearranging a few things <laughs> either way. All right. Let's see if there is another question. Oh, it's kind of on the other end. So Janice asked last week, she sent me a response, how to begin to downsize. So I've been working with a lot of downsizing clients lately, and those are people that are either getting ready to move or retire and want to get a smaller house so they can travel or um, whatever situation is happening. Um, there's lots of families moving back in together or moving back onto the property. Um, there's just moving across country and you don't want to move all that stuff. Um, a lot of different ways and reasons for people to downsize, but I've been helping a lot of people and Janice asked what the easiest way to start that would be. Um, and I thought that was a great question too, because many people have lots of things and you want to have less or you want to make things easier, but where do you even start? All right. Hold that thought. The cat keeps clawing at me again. I'm going to have to let him out and let him suffer outside <laughs> while we finish this video. Hang on. 
That's better. Okay, so where to start? Um, ooh, I have people hanging out with me today. Welcome, hello. Um, and if you have a question, type it in the comments below and I will see it and be able to answer your question. Um, so it's best to just start with the easy stuff. Now, I would also recommend starting with a spot and working your way kind of methodically around your house, doing the easy stuff. And then you go back through again. So if you're starting on your kitchen counter, just take everything off the kitchen counter, wipe it down and put back only what you are going to keep. Anything that isn't, you don't need, throw it away or donate it or recycle it. Anything you're not sure of, put into a separate pile of I don't know. It's my yes, no, maybe method. And it allows you to do that easy stuff first. So you may not get rid of very much at first, um, but in, as the example with the clients I was working with today, we started about um, three sessions ago and the first time was really hard. They wanted to keep everything. They wanted to get rid of things, but then they wanted to keep everything at the same time. And, and we only got rid of like one trash bag full of stuff. Last time uh, we worked on uh, a little bit more obvious things that could go. And so we got rid of um, three boxes and a bag of trash and a bag of recycling. This time um, we were working on smaller things again, but we had two bags of trash, a bag, a bag of, um, or two bags of recycling and a box and a half of donation. So there was lots of stuff that could go. It was just there in the way. And notice how much of that was trash. So one of the things that piles up around and can help that feeling of overwhelm um, intensify is the packaging on things. So I'm gonna do a whole video in a few weeks on just how to deal with packaging, but it is a big problem. Um, both the packaging you get that stuff comes in and the things you save to repackage things when you give gifts or you're gonna carry it to the car or you're just gonna set it in that spot and you don't want it to get dusty. So you add packaging back on top of things you already unpackage. It can be a real problem. So those are two suggestions to just be aware that there's going to be a lot of, of trash and recycling that can happen and, and pay attention to the packaging, the boxes for computer stuff, um, all the the wrapped in wrapped things that you get at the big box stores um, or Costco or something like that, where it's wrapped in a big plastic wrapper and then wrapped again inside of that. So keep that in mind because um, every little bit that leaves creates more space around your stuff. Um, it's funny, but if you have space, it seems much easier to get at things, to reach for things, to see what's going on, as opposed to smashing everything together really close and tight. Um, so know that um, and just work your way around methodically. So the kitchen counter and then each cabinet, each drawer, work one at a time and just weed out as much as possible. Second time through, do it again. You'll be amazed when you have found five other pairs of scissors all around the house and you go to the junk drawer and now you have five pairs of scissors in the junk drawer. You just weeded out. You can now eliminate four more pairs of scissors. It works out very well to think of it as kind of a layered and do the easy stuff first. Also, the more you investigate other things, like once you find the five pairs of scissors, you can remember which one is the one that actually cuts string really good and which is the one that only works on paper now and which one might cut cloth if you even need those kinds of scissors. Um, you're just more informed when you gather like things together. Um, and that pile of maybe things, when you work on a certain area and you do the yes, no, maybe, Go ahead and look at that maybe pile again at the end before you close out your session, because chances are you're going to get rid of some more of that stuff right now because you already have a little more information going on. Um, and if you still can't make a decision, leave it in the maybe box, because I'd love for you to start getting used to having less and see if you can pull it off. Um, what's the worst that could happen? You go to the maybe box and you pull out that other thing. But if you have it out of the way, you give yourself, your brain, and, and your other people in the house a chance to try without that thing in the way and see if, if it changes anything. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, but 98% of the time, it doesn't make a difference at all if you don't keep that thing. So know that. Um, and, and the other trick I love for um, downsizing is, hi, Chelsea. Thanks for dropping by. Um, the other thing about downsizing is reverse engineering. So if you are going somewhere smaller, what are the things that are, think about the essential things. What are the things you cannot live without? I mean, literally, like, what is your clothing, the essentials, like pretend you're going on a trip. What would you take on a trip for living the life you want to live? Okay, so pretend you're going on this experimental, experiential lifestyle vacation. What would that look like? What would you take with you? How much cooking would you do in your ideal life? How much sleeping and reading would you do? How much arts and crafts would you do? How much work would you do? Would you keep that bow and arrow and and um, and continue playing archery games? <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. What is it? Tournaments, archery tournaments. Um, or would you let the bow and arrow go and not take it on the plane with you across the country on this trip and, and rent one or not do the archery? You know, there's, and I use kind of silly examples just to help you see that anything, crocheting, knitting, canning, making candles, um, that, thing you used to do, you used to play golf or you used to play tennis or you used to do that thing with the kids, whatever it is, maybe you don't do it anymore. Maybe you don't take it with you. Maybe it's something you leave in the old space. Um, maybe it's something that isn't in the way and you still enjoy it and so it gets to come. But if you reverse engineer it by thinking through the things you'd love to do, how you would love to do it, what things would be ideal to have to pull it off, um, then you can eliminate all the other stuff you bought just in case you might need it or because it was the extra stuff in the set you bought to get the one thing you really needed in that set. All these things contribute to the clutter and the excess and the extra stuff around. So if you start with the easy things, try living without some of the maybe things, let more of that go, and then reverse engineer. Sometimes you have to buy new things because your ideal life in all that clutter you have, you don't have the ideal version of the thing you need to do that. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, this is a great example right here. I've started doing these videos and once winter came and it's getting dark earlier, I realized I need more lighting. But I don't have a great place to put a new light. And so I've been playing around with, with the lighting in here for a couple of weeks now to see if I can figure out a way to get the lighting just right. But that means I've tried three different kinds of lights, um, and I don't know which one is going to make the final cut, if any of them. I may go a different route entirely. So then I can let go of the lights I got that aren't going to work for me. But sometimes there's trial and error, and sometimes the thing hasn't turned up yet. I still don't have the right lighting. So think about that. Um, okay. So Chelsea and other person that I can't – oh, is that Giovanna? Hello. Hello. Um, anyone have a question for me? <laughs> Let me check one more place uh, for questions that come in. And um, see, we got 20 minutes off of two questions. That's pretty good. I went in depth. How to let go of your OCD. How to downsize easily. Um, all right, let's see if I got any questions here. Did I get some? No questions yet. Okay. All right. Oop. All right. So I must be really, really good at this. <laughs> um, but just as a reminder, I'm going to um, put up the website, morethanorganized.net. Um, you can go there and get lots of free stuff. There are articles and tips and um, a one minute mail solution kit, which is a whole audio workbook and email course that helps you gain control of your mail and tackle some of the backlog of papers that are piling up all around. Um, paper is a huge thing in downsizing, by the way. Um, most of the clients I've been working with lately, it's they brought me in for the paper 
and it is so much paper. It is so much, I don't know if I need, or it was really interesting information. So one of the things I've realized as I work with people over the years is interesting people are interesting and they're interested in a lot of different things. And so they have lots of books, lots of magazines, lots of articles, lots of things from friends, lots of things from travels, lots of things. And much of that is paper because they're interested in the information about and around all the stuff they do. And so think of it that way. What are the, those activities you actually still participate in? Not things that are interesting and you read. I love reading online because I can read the article and then I can just let it go back to live on the website where it originated. I don't need to keep it, but I can still feel really informed and stay connected to what's happening in the, the world these days but I don't have to print out all the paper. Um, and so keep that in mind as well. I think um, recognizing that you are interested and interesting and you don't actually need to keep every article about a topic uh, to be able to still enjoy the topic or talk about it easily will be quite freeing. It would be nicer to have someone over to talk about that topic than to say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come over. I don't have enough room on my couch to let you sit down because it's covered with papers about that topic right? It happens all the time. You can't sit on my couch because I'm too interesting. <laughs> so I would love to, to just help shift people's thoughts a little bit to how can I uh, use the things I'm interested in to connect with other people or to make a difference somehow. Um, and I love that um, visual. I'm just, I'm kind of tickled by my own visual today, <laughs> but it's happened. Um, all right, so Chelsea, help with streamlining the paper clutter. Same process, definitely need, not sure if I need, and um, can definitely go. So if it can definitely go, you're gonna have to decide if it's uh, shred or recycle or just trash. Um, and if it's definitely keep, you're gonna need to figure out how you're gonna file it. But the first step is to put all the papers you're actually gonna keep into a file box. Um, I love um, a particular type of file box. I, of course, don't have one in my office. <laughs> it's in the storage area, but they are um, the Iris file boxes. You can get them at Staples or at the Container Store um, and at many other places. Um, and it is just the standard file box. It's about the size of a banker's box, but it's clear plastic. Um, it's polypropylene, so it's um, acid-free and archival safe. Um, and it has rails that can ha hold either um, letter or legal files, but they're also almost straight-sided. So I don't know if you all have noticed, but a lot of storage bins are tapered. And then you can't fit, especially papers, straight up and down in them. But these file boxes, hang on one second. I'm just going to grab one to show you. Um, they're just across my hallway. Hang on. It's this one. <laughs> I'll put it back here so it's, uh, I'll be able to show you what it's like. Um, so it's really um, just baker's box size. And you can kind of see in it. So it's great. That one has my memorabilia. So that's all my memorabilia. <laughs> um, but they're great for paper. And if you get, um, I don't know, two of them, one for your key papers and one for the I'm not sure I need them. You can always use, when you decide against the stuff you're not sure about, you can always use it to store something else. I have one that has the chair covers for my patio. I have one that has the memorabilia. I have um, my archive tax files in them. Um, and, you know, they're just great because they are useful as storage boxes and file boxes. And they have the hanging rods for both hanging uh, letter and legal folders. So you can use it as a filing system as well. Um, that would be my biggest um, kind of hint for dealing with papers is 
just put all the keep ones into a box and then take the box when it's full and create a file system from that. And um, Chelsea and anyone else who is uh, interested, I, the One Minute Mail Solution Kit does not have suggested file labels, but it has a method of how to sort papers when they come in. Uh, the Streamlined Paper Solution online course does have file label suggestions uh, within it, and that's an, an, a paid audio and workbook. Um, goes a little more in depth on how to create a file system and then the system for dealing with your papers, um, your bill paying, and, and how to structure that. Um, all those tips can be worked on physically with physical paper files or virtual in your computer or, you know, setting that up in, in Dropbox or Evernote. Um, all, the same system applies in all those locations. It just has, uh, it will walk you through uh, how to set that up. Um, and it's real easy. There's only 13 categories in my file system, and that is overkill for most people. So um, that covers everything I've ever encountered in anyone's house. I've never had to put a different folder into the drawer. So that's easy, right? <laughs> it's just organized enough. All right. Well, we've only got a couple minutes left. Thank you all for um, dropping by and hanging out. Thanks for your questions and comments, Chelsea. Thanks everyone else who's dropped in. Um, and as always, you can send other questions that I will answer in the January um, video. And if you have any other questions, comments, or want to find other ways to work with me, check out morethanorganized.net and or comment here on Facebook and I will get back to you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great holiday. I hope you all get rid of some papers. <laughs> Later. Bye.